Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and I'm a historical researcher and author. Now, what I want to do today is talk to you about the concept of Kudo, Japanese archery. I woke up this morning to a million response videos from uh, Snap Jelly, Shadversity and Metatron and they were all debunking a game theorist's video about a game called Honor and about Samurai versus Knights versus this. And I spoke to Raph, that's Metatron, last night and we discussed this concept and I'm making this video so that you guys have a single point to come to uh, when we're talking about Kudo. Now, in Metatron's video he gave the words Kudo and Kujutsu and what I want to do, and he knows I'm doing this, I'm going to expand on that point inside that video. I'll link everyone's videos below so you can go through them. Now to us as modern people, we understand the word Kudo to mean way of the bow, a very zen, very esoteric um, way of using the Japanese bow and we all understand it as a very peaceful, ritualistic, zen-like, um, it's not a sport, but pastime if you will. Whereas we as modern people understand the word Kujutsu, meaning skills with a bow, to be very dynamic, warlike, moving forward quickly, taking him out, wow there goes one, there goes another one, duck down, you know, on your, on your front while you get out more arrows, very much moving around in formation. That's how we as modern people understand it. However, when you go back to medieval documents, I personally have seen the word Yumi, the word Kudo, and the word Kujutsu in the same series of documents, written by the same people basically, all talking about the same thing. I've even seen the word Kendo used in medieval documents, or at least older documents, to mean just Kenjutsu, meaning the way. So back in medieval times, if you, if you liked the broad statement medieval times, people used different words to mean the same thing and we look at them and, and put our own attachment to them. So we have to be careful. When we use the word Kudo and Kujutsu, we have to remember that's our division, not theirs. But while it's a broad division and mostly correct, there's a thin line where they're interspersed. So when you watch films like The Last Samurai, Kurosawa and all that, everything's going off, the battles are going on, slam, smash, damn you sir, you know, bang, down he goes. Then all of a sudden, they take a shot of the archer and the archer goes. And, and somebody goes down and you're like. So I used to go, I did a, a very, I did an eight to 10 week course on Kudo in Ayase, in a dojo in Ayase. And you know, it was very nice, but it was very ritualistic. And one of the major questions that I came up with was, how did samurai actually fight with bows and arrows? Because everything else is very dynamic, very fast, very brutal, but yet Kudo is very slow. So I asked my good friend Yoshie Minami, my translator, to go and have a look on the Japanese interweb and all that. And basically what I'm about to tell you is very, very well known. It's nothing new, it's not mind blowing. It's there in the Japanese world of Kudo and in the Japanese world of the, the internet in their own language. So let's have a quick look at how modern Kudo came about. Okay, the Japanese bow, the Yumi, dates back a long time. It, it's mentioned in early writings. It's asymmetrical and it's shorter at this end and longer at that end. And they used to charge up and down on horses and they practiced something called Yabusame where they go down and they shoot targets from horseback. Now, of course, as we know, earlier samurai loved archery. They used to ride up and down and they would, you know, engage in you know, in warfare with the bow. And there's famous stories of people putting fans on top of boats and then the samurai coming on the beach and he draws back and, toof, and he hits the fan off the bow, off the, the top of the mast. All great stuff. As time goes on, you then get to the point where we've got a much more sophisticated section of warfare in the 1500s, that's the 16th century, and we've got troops, ranks, um, pikes, things like that. And what you get is Ashigaru go to the front. So sometimes you get a musket 
and then next to him you'll get a, an archer and while the musket is reloading archers will be firing off they will go forward and just pepper the other side and then on a given command they will divide and move they'll peel left peel right then the samurai will dismount and come forward and they'll go into what's called Yariba, the field of spears and that, that's where they go into war and then Ichiban Yari comes the first spear and, and that archery like sort of goes up to the sidelines then so in this period you've got a very dynamic form of archery where people are on the ground, they're pulling out from their quiver down ways, they're, they put their arrow on, stand up, shoot, they'll move forward, they'll be crouching, running, walking, they'll be moving and turning in formations. Now these skills are based in what's called Ryuha, schools. So we get Koryu, meaning schools from samurai times basically. And all the different schools in Japan broadly do similar things, but they of course have individual skills that they keep to themselves as secrets and kuden, their oral transmissions, so they can defeat the enemy. Then the Edo period comes and that brings with it peace, and what we find is a, a, some decline in the samurai arts, and samurai arts become a lot more formulaic, and kata becomes a lot more formulaic. So here you get like standing competitions, shooting competitions, you'll see, oh, you'll see images of people shooting through corridors or trying to get rid of as many arrows as possible in a certain time. Uh, and, it, and it becomes very much like our field target archery, if you like. Then we get the end of the samurai period and the samurai pretty much are disbanded. Of course that then brings a massive drop in samurai warfare skills. Now, in the late 1800s, people came together to save Kudo, to save archery, and they tried to bring all the different elements from different styles, but allegedly it didn't work so well and that, you know, it didn't quite match and fit. So then World War II breaks out, then after World War II, martial arts are banned. Later, when martial arts are reinstated, a federation gets together, they come together and they create a manual that teaches all the different Kudo styles how to come together and study the, the art of archery in a single method, a single way. Now there are different forms of archery. There is Reisha and Buncha. These are ritualistic forms. That means when you're in court, so you know you're, you're in um, basically the emperor's palace and they're doing their festivals and rituals or you're at a, a temple somewhere. I've seen it done myself is somebody will ritualistically shoot an arrow into a fire or they'll ritualistically shoot, I think it's northeast, and they'll get rid of demons. And the idea that there's a spiritual religious element behind this, totally different to warfare. The next is busha, which literally means martial shooting. And this is, as we say, you know, different skills for getting down, different skills for shooting and killing the enemy. There, so remember, the first one, the ritualistic one, is based on getting rid of demons, purification. This one is about killing a live human being who's running around and you've got to beat him. We also have different styles of shooting. The first one we've got is hosha. That's literally walking and shooting where you have to advance and shoot on the enemy. We also have Kisha, which is mounted archery, basically. So you're on a horse, running around, killing the enemy. Then we have Dosha, which is literally, as we say, target shooting, field shooting. So you've erected a target and you shoot at it and you try to get a bullseye. So all these different styles and types of shooting were very much alive in the samurai period. And then they started to decline to the point of World War II, where it all ended. And then it was reinstated later as a very formulaic, very program-based style where people didn't have to join a school, a koryu, they could join a kudo club and they could study these basic forms to teach them how to shoot a bow. But is it war archery? No, it's actually a mixture of ritual archery and target field archery with a lot of zen mixed in. So. Do they use the same weapon? Yes, they use the same weapon. Do they draw it in a similar way? Mm, maybe, maybe not. I've seen different ways of drawing the bolt. We, we see the very classic up you go and down, shoot. But I've also seen very much quick up and shoot in warfare schools in different, when they're doing tactical maneuvers. So what we're left with is the question is, how did samurai used to fight with a bow? And can Kudo represent that? The answer is that the way samurai used to fight with a bow depended on the school they came from, but they would be broadly similar. 
And modern Kudo is a reflection of a federation getting together and organising a way for people to practice field archery together that has dashes of ritual archery and a lot of Zen involved. So while they're parallel and they touch ever so slightly, the one is not the same as the other. So if you're like me, I made the mistake of believing Kudo was how samurai used to shoot bows. And of course, once you break this down and go into it, that's not quite true. So I've made this video so you guys can just simply have an understanding and say, ah, okay, that, that is one form of Japanese archery, but probably not massively correct when we compare it to the Sengoku period. So to sum up, archery has been around in Japan for a long time. It predates the samurai. The samurai used it in mounted combat. They then moved it to formations during the 16th century. It then becomes a peacetime practice in the Edo period where samurai just have to maintain some form of military discipline. And then it's banned after World War II. And after World War II, they bring it together and they take elements from all different types of archery, such as ritual archery, target shooting archery, zen and things like that, and they created modern kudo. So while the word kudo does exist in medieval period, and while the word kujutsu does exist in the medieval period, what we see today is a kaleidoscopic change. It's, it's, it's a, you can see that is the original archery, but it's been changed and manipulated to a very modern form. So we're left with the question is, how did the samurai used to fight with a bow? And it's summer I'm going to investigate. I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. If you guys know about Japanese archery, please give me some information below. I'll try and read as many comments as possible. Subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time.